It's been a long road, four years. DBD in all honesty has done a decent job to keep its fans, acquiring new, fresh ideas in terms of killers including many licenses. However, all of these characters are stuck. Stuck in one game mode. A lot of people have gotten, well, bored. However, with the slow decline and newer, prettier titles being released, this year the question has to be asked, is DBD slowly dying? Well, if you take a look at the Steam charts, yes and no. There are obvious spikes at special events. No, not that one. DLCs, rework maps and rifts are reasons for the fans of DBD to return. However, how long can they keep that momentum? At the end of the day, common issues like FPS, balance and server lag are still an issue in year four of development. I recently bought Call of Duty Cold War. There have been a few lingering issues here and there, however, come December 10th, it's all being addressed. Poof, gone. This is the sort of thing one should expect with a AAA title. However, four years in and grossing 118 million last financial year, well, you expect more. Well guys, here are five reasons why DBD is slowly dying. Before we get to number one, don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you want to stay up to date with the channel. Number one, one game mode. Yeah, this one is fairly obvious to any longtime veteran, not even that. Play DBD for one year and you surely will start thinking to yourself, hmm, I've been playing this one mode for a year. If you are a survivor, you do gens, get chased, heal your teammate, get chased. Do some more gens and so forth. You get the idea. I know there are loads of maps and all that, and but survivor to me is stuck. Now killer. Killer is the same. M1 a survivor, hook, break, gen, repeat. The added bonus to killer is that they have their own unique power, which is great, but for how long can you be doing that? I myself, a four year veteran, am starting to get bored. I know there are loads of perks too, but I've done it all. All in all, four years in and we have one game mode. It wouldn't be that hard to add some different objectives or two killers and eight survivors in custom games. Let the community have fun with one another again. I think this would be a welcome change It wouldn't impact the game on any level. And you know what? You'd probably get some valuable data regarding what the community wants. If you keep chucking things in there and people keep playing it, you'll get an idea of what people want again. Call it a permanent PTB if you will. Number two, survivors are still the same. As covered a little on number one, there is only so much you can do as a survivor. And yeah, 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 you have a bunch of perks, but all surrounding one mode. Another thing is, the survivors are really just skins. Nothing about them sets them apart from the others, apart from appearance and perks. And you can achieve the latter from getting them to 50 and acquiring their teachables. Another objective would be nice. You have gens and bones. That's it. Everything else is pretty linear. Once upon a time, it was talked about having the survivors have a job that's unique to them. A class system would be pretty cool. Maybe it won't work now overall, however, just talking about it is kind of interesting. You could have a medic, Claudette, an objective class, Jake, and a runner like Nia and Meg. I don't know, some further distinction would be welcome change. It would also alleviate the problem with having meta perks like DS, BT, and DH used all the time. Break up and divide. Could be fun. Number three, devs politics. Now again, I get it, yeah, 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 behavior as a company has done really well for themselves. Considering as well, it's a indie company. Jesus Christ. Now they have released a total of 18 DLCs and yeah, they have kept a lot of fans interested and hyped for the next DLC. However, during this time, there has been a lot of backhanded politics and definite PC-like mentality to go with it. A lot, and I mean a lot, of back padding coming from the devs on the stream and no real interaction with the fans. We have been told directly from Matthew Cote to play a different game if you, the customer, is bored or frustrated. It comes off as laziness and, yeah, a bit of an ego. There is an overall feeling that the devs don't value your opinion and the recent fiasco with banning people for saying, baby, it's just more proof of that. Ignoring criticism seems to be their way of life now, and just dropping a band instead doesn't help this kind of thing. This kind of behavior from behavior will only leave fans disenchanted from the franchise and put asses in seats for a more deserving title. Number four, the grind. Jesus, the progression system needs some work, guys. For a game that isn't Call of Duty or a AAA title, the grind is just stupid. If you're coming into this game now, you have a long road ahead of you. You have to level a character to 50, and even then you don't have all the perks in the game. And then you have to level another character, like the Cannibal, for instance, to 50 just to get their teachable barbecue and chili, and then 
find it on the original Killer's Blood Lab you were leveling. I get a lot of comments lately saying it's not pay to win, but honestly, if you want to perk quicker, you have to pay the DLC price for that particular chapter. But you still have to grind for it. I know we have the shrine, but come on, you hardly ever get a perk you need on it. The fact we are on chapter 18 now and the perks still have levels is a bit too much. If you get the perk on the blood web, then that should be it. Boom, it's yours. Something needs to be sorted of behavior. Bring down that importance level, guys. Number five, running out of ideas. Now to keep games interesting for four years, yeah, I've, it's gotta be a difficult thing to achieve, but Jesus, some of these killers, man. They are pretty much the same thing. This was more noticeable after the chapter 17 release of The Blight. Now personally for me, I love him. He is fun as hell, but we cannot deny the fact that there's a large amount of fast moving killers. Billy, Oni, Legion, and now Blight. The killers are supposed to be unique, and in a way they obviously are with how they work in general, but the mechanic is overall the same. There are some cool ideas in here, and it's clear that chapter 18 they went for something very different, with the baby. But I think with all the points mentioned earlier, overall there is only so much you can do with what they've got. It's on the same maps guys. The same mechanics and the same goal all in the same mode. It's obvious after 4 years anyone would be starting to run out of ideas. The alternative of course is to listen to the community. Now I know they have on some occasions. Obviously Undying was a community creation originally. In terms of killers there are tons of forums, videos and channels dedicated to new ideas. Why don't we have a werewolf, a vampire, wall climber, a pirate, a knight or anything like that is beyond me. Just seems we are refreshing old ideas and slapping it on new characters. Know of any other reasons why DVD is slowly dying? Let us know in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and drop a like and subscribe to stay up to date with the channel. Join our discord to continue the conversation. All the links are in the description below. I'll see you in the fog guys.